here's what I think. We were all of us created in the image of God, which means we are a creature that God wanted on this planet the way that we were created. God doesn't make mistakes. That is that is canon. God doesn't make mistakes. God might be an asshole sometimes, but God does not make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And we also have a lot of much, much more prominent, much stronger commandments. And here's the thing. Here's the thing I always bring up, right? Whenever somebody's like, well, here, Leviticus 18.22, in your face. If you haven't read Leviticus 19, you can't focus on Leviticus 18. Because mm -hmm. literally one paragraph later, one paragraph later. So you finish reading through the, the list in Leviticus 18. You finish reading through the list of all these horrific acts of incest and all sorts of really nasty stuff that you're not allowed to do, which is casually throws in also don't lie with a man as you would with a woman. And then the chapter ends and then it's chapter 19. And it is a list of really solid ethical principles. Mm -hmm. Like don't put an obstacle in front of a blind person. Don't curse a deaf person. Um, you know, stand up and honor your elders. Don't seek revenge. These are like, it's like a moral code literally right after this. And one of the things that is listed there, Leviticus 19 verse 18 is love your neighbor as yourself which is a very famous, very well-known mm -hmm. saying, and that's where it's from. It's literally one paragraph later. We have a, a saying, we have a couple sayings about this in Judaism, which is that that verse right there, love your neighbor as yourself, that is the entire Torah. That is our, that is the most, that is the highest commandment and it trumps all the other commandments. And it's just the most important thing to focus on and the most important thing to practice. Mm -hmm. well, that's one. one. One thing is no matter what you think of someone else's of someone else's sexuality, no matter if you think someone else is doing something that is absolutely wrong and against your religion, you are commanded to love them no matter what. They were created in the image of God and you're commanded to love them. Mm -hmm. The other thing is we're also commanded to love ourselves. And this is, you know, if you consider the script of the Bible, the Old Testament, if you consider that a sacred part of your faith and a, and a part, a practical element in how you practice and how you observe your religion. And even if you do, even if you do take the Bible at face value, which, by the way, is really difficult to do because there's some really whack stuff in there. I don't know how you intend to sacrifice a red heifer. I don't even know if any of them exist anymore. And so, you know, whatever, there's really whack stuff. Even if you do take it at face value, we are commanded to love ourselves mm -hmm. as well. And that's a little later in Deuteronomy. And we are also commanded to be careful and consider our own lives sacred. Here, here's how I get to, we're commanded to love yourselves. We're commanded to love God. Which is, a, which is the first line in a paragraph that we recite every day. Jews recite every day, multiple times a day, right? It's the first paragraph of the, of the Shema. Here's the logic. If you are commanded to love God and there is a peace of God in all of us, Therefore, you are commanded to love yourself as you are with all of your might. And that is fierce, that it's not just that you can or that you, but that you should love yourself, but that you have to. If you live by this book, then you have to love yourself exactly as you are, exactly as God made you. That is the way that I personally resolve that. Basically, yes, there is this one thing that's awkward for me to read as a person who is queer. It's awkward. As a person who loves this book very much, it's very difficult for me to read it because it really does kind of look like or sound like God saying, me, I'm an abomination. It really does sound like that when you read it at first. It's hard. 
it's hard to it's hard to read it but there are so many other things that this book says mm -hmm. so much more that this book has to give and by far loving our neighbor as ourselves and loving god with all of our might and therefore loving ourselves with all of our might are top priority and we cannot follow this book if we don't prioritize because there's way too many things that we are supposed to do in this book. And we have to prioritize and we do, we do. <laughs> Nobody is gonna start saying that we don't pick and choose. We pick and choose. We pick and choose canonically. The rabbis pick and choose, the, our leaders pick and choose. We always pick and choose. And so pick loving yourself. Choose loving yourself and choose loving your neighbor. Mic drop. <laughs>